Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Okay, this is going to be a little bit different tonight. I'm here to tell you why everybody needs a little bit of ham clock in their life. Um, you can spend $400, $500 or pounds on Geochron and a big 55 inch television if that's if that's what um, floats your boat. I don't have the money to invest in a toy like that or really the space. But I did have a spare Raspberry Pi don't turn off if you're scared of Raspberry Pis. And I bought this um, a while back and I didn't know why I bought it. It was one of these things that popped up. What is it? It is an 11 and a half inch. Um, looks like a tablet. And um, it's not, it's actually a touch screen. And I bought it with the intention of doing something in mind. Uh, it was a crowd starter, Kickstarter project. By the time it turned up, I'd completely forgotten what I was going to do with it. And then I had the idea of ham clock. So, quickly about the tablet, then a little bit about ham clock, and then a little bit about Keith G6 NHU's cluster, which is designed to run on ham clock, and it's super simple to operate as well. So, first of all, this thing, yeah, from the front it looks like a, an Android tablet or a, an I, um, what do you call it? iPad thing. From the back, <laughs> looks a bit more prototype -y. So, the board here is part of the device, it's fixed to it. Um, all these different leads plus more come in the box with this, including, um, uh, you know, a wall wart to power it. I had a Raspberry Pi 3 kicking about. Um, with no use for it. So what I did was I, I went onto the Ham Clock website. Now I'm going to, not going to explain too much about how to do this, but it's super, super simple. I'll put all the links for the different websites in the description. So go onto the Ham Clock website, burn um, an SD card um, with Ham Clock on it, stick it in here, turn it on, and it boots up into Ham Clock. It's so, so simple. You don't have to worry about Linux or any of these things. It just works. And if Hamcock needs an update, it tells you on the screen and you can click update and it just does it for you. It is so, so easy. Um, the configuration screens of Hamcock actually look a little bit clunky because it's not that high resolution, but they're so easy to use. And, um, and that takes me on to Keith's. Um, DX cluster that he's made specifically to work with ham clock on his website which I will link below he describes how his DX cluster is, is designed to work with ham clock and also gives you very very simple instructions on how to configure it just using the standard ham clock configuration screens which I've done already so I'm going to turn this ham clock on and um, literally just plug it in and it'll boot itself up and I'm not going to show you that but I'll show you what mine looks like and I'll explain the different aspects of it okay so give me a minute let's take a look at this ham clock then I will zoom into this and um, the advantage using this device is no keyboard no mouse cluttering your desktop um, it comes with a little stand so you can sit it on your desktop. It's easily mounted to a wall or something using screws or a panel and there's even a 3D printed case you can get for it which kind of turns it into a handheld tablet. I've got my um, call sign set up on the left hand side um, and you can see the time there in UTC and the date. Across the top I've got the uh, percentage chance of an aurora taking place. And across from that, I've then got solar flux, and then a nice graphic there showing um, different phases of the sun. And you can see that all I've got to do is tap on each of these modules, and I can get different options that are available for them. Uh, this end one is quite important, particularly uh, when the sun's active, you've got your SFI, number of sunspots, solar wind, etc. So the map I've got set is recommended by Keith here. It's DRAP, D-R-A-P. And um, you can have terrain, um, you can have an aurora um, display on there as well. Um, and also you can have grid lines, etc. on your map. But um, I decided not to bother with any of that. 
And then the most important thing here, if you're um, into your DX cluster, this is Keith's uh, DX cluster, which just runs seamlessly down the left-hand side here, and it uses two boxes. Um, before I had this set up, I had two separate boxes here, um, and one showed uh, the next um, due pass of the International Space Station. So it just shows you the flexibility of this um, this app. And um, if you can see by looking at the map here, you know these are all the sort of uh, contacts that are being made from this from this cluster. Um, but I've also got the uh, International Space Station traced on here um, in its orbit, and you can use that for other satellites as well. And it's one of these things. Um, you can't really break it. You can only mess about with it. Every time you start it up, you can go into the configuration, you can change bits and pieces, or you can just tap away on the screen. So there we go. That's my ham clock. And I know you're asking yourself, why does Fraser run a ham clock when he's a portable operator and he uses his Radio Shack about twice a year? Well, first of all, it was a cool little project to set up. Super simple, the touch screen that I bought for no apparent reason, a spare Raspberry Pi, an SD card, and it just it just worked. And because um, I've got a nice wife, and it's quite a nice visual thing, she lets me sit it in the kitchen, and it's just on all the time. So that's cool as well. And actually, I do think that as amateurs, we all have a bit of a duty to understand a little bit about what's going on with the sun. And um, it does frustrate me a little bit when people say, oh, the bands are dead. Um, you know, I don't know what's going on, nobody's on the radio, but you can actually learn a lot from solar data. And I'm not talking about becoming a solar scientist, but just by looking at sunspots, SFI, the K index, all of this kind of stuff, it just really opens your eyes up to what the sun's doing, how it affects propagation. So that's ham clock. Um, it's a much cheaper version of Geochron, and it's so flexible, I think it actually does everything that I need. If you've got any questions, ask in the comments. I'll be happy to help. But all the links are in the description. Everything you need to get this up and running, either on a TV, spare old monitor, television, or um, a little tablet like this. Have fun with hand clock.